the channel. So as you can see today, we are not in the shop. We are in fact in our spare bedroom, or as my granddaughter calls it, her room. Um, when we bought this house a couple years ago, uh, my granddaughter came over to see the house and she instantly uh, walked in this room and said, and this is my room. And I said, babe, you don't live here. And she said, but this is my room. And I, I didn't really want to tell her that, yeah, it's actually her room. You can't really argue with a four-year-old, right? Um, so we set this room up as our grandkids' room, but it's also a spare bedroom, um, and we have this bed in it in case people come over. You know, we have a friend come over and stay with us. They have a place to sleep. Mostly it's got all of our grandkids' toys in here. And um, a pro past project that my wife and I did, we built this, uh, this we call it the Monster Keeper, a uh, stuffed animal holder out of um, reclaimed two by fours from pallets and just $10 worth of paracord from Home Depot. It works really well and my grandson likes to get inside of it with the, with the stuffed animals, so that's always fun too. I guess it works for holding him in too. Again, you can't argue with a four year old. Um, my grandson, speaking of him, you guys probably seen him in the end of my video for the Dice Tower project. Um, he's coming over to stay with us for a little while his, uh, his parents are going to be busy doing something else, and we're going to be babysitting for a few days. And we need a place for him to sleep, so they haven't actually spent the night on this bed. My wife is concerned about the height of it and him rolling off. We've had him uh, spend the night with us in our bed, and he's kind of a bulldozer, moves around a lot. So what she asked me to do was create some sort of bed rail that would hold him in so he can't roll off the bed. So this project is going to be creating a bed rail for this bed. So let's get to work. So the first step is always just to process your lumber. This was a 10 foot stick of mahogany that I found at my local lumber yard. Um, when I set it up on my miter saw, I realized right away that it was too long to fit between the miter saw and the wall, proper planning and all of that. So the first cut I got to make by hand, that's okay. You guys know I like the hand saws anyway. Once I got through that, then it was short enough that I could start using the miter saw for the rest of the cuts, using the one that I had just cut to mark the rest of them. That way I know they're all the same. So the design called for two vertical posts on each end and then a horizontal rail that, that would be sandwiched between the two vertical posts. Um, I knew I needed to run a rabbit in the end of these because the thickness of the horizontal rail was not as thick as the bed frame itself. And you'll, it'll make sense here in a little bit, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this was just a standard method of run it through the router table, back the fence up, run it through the router table, back the fence up, you get where I'm going with this. And then once we had all of our parts cut, we could take that back into the bedroom. Now you'll start to understand what I was after here. So these are my vertical posts. Well, there'll be two on each end, and then the horizontal rail will sandwich between them. So I took it back in the bedroom, started clamping everything up just to get it all positioned, make a few marks on the horizontal rail so that I knew where everything went. And of course, make sure we get it evenly spaced. So now you can really tell what the design's gonna look like. This was the part where I realized that the rabbits that I had put in the, hor the vertical posts were not deep enough or, or wide enough so that it didn't slide down over the frame of the bed 
as far as it needed to. So back to the workshop, clamp all of those on my bench, break out the big router. Now this is an inch and a half uh, surfacing bit that I bought for surfacing large slabs. Um, I haven't actually used it for that, but it came in handy right here. <laughs> yeah, that one slid out of my clamp there. That was almost a major disaster. Got to keep your eyes on what you're doing, guys. As you can see, this bit really mows through it. Um, just taking real light passes like you would surfacing any slab. With the fence set up there, it only lets it go so far, but it, it creates a rabbit much deeper than my router table could get because, like I said, couldn't get the fence back far enough, and I'm not really a fan of removing the fence. With all of that done, back in the bedroom one more time, clamp all of this up. Now that it's working the way I wanted it to, we can glue everything up. You can see how the rabbit slides down much farther on the bed frame than it did before. And then on to the other side, glue that one up as well. make sure to clean up all your squeeze out. Now I let this sit overnight just clamped up right there so the glue could dry and I knew it was in the right position before I moved it. And then back to the workshop, take all the clamps off and here's what we got. So now it's time for the sanding. So like I said, I found this thing at my local lumber yard. It was listed S4S or surfaced four sides. And I think their version of surface four sides and my version of surface four sides are a little bit different. This thing had all of the edges rounded over and was pretty much finished sanded. So the only real spots that I needed to address were the cut ends that I made in it. And then other than that, I'm just hitting it here with 220 grit just to clean up anything from working the piece of wood and bumping it into stuff and things like that. So there wasn't a lot of sanding on this, just a, a little overall buffing it up, scuffing it a little bit to get it ready for finish, but pretty minimal sanding. So I'm pretty lucky to have found this, what they called surface four sides piece of wood that in my opinion was more like finished.
and then after we get everything sanded, clean it up with the denatured alcohol to take all the sanding dust off of it. And then you get a sneak preview of kind of what the wood grain is going to look like, what the finish is going to look like. I always enjoy this part. And then the part everybody's waiting for, putting a finish on this thing. So for this one, I just went with natural finish uh, Danish oil. I wanted something that would give it a nice pop, um, be a nice color, contrast the bed just a little bit, but not contrast it so much that it would hurt your eyes, if that makes sense. So to me, the Danish oil seemed like the way to go. And I think it worked out really well. It, it really put this mahogany in a really nice tone and I think it works well with the bed frame. You'll see here in a little bit, uh, once I get it back on the bed, how those two colors work together. I think I hit this one pretty good. And then with that, I think we're finished with this one. We can take it back to the bed, throw it on there, and call this one done. All right, guys, there you have it. One bed rail. One of the things that my wife asked me for specifically on this was to have this be removable. And um, very simply removable, just slides down over that. Done, just like that. That ought to hold him in for when he's moving around in the bed. I think it'll work just great. So if you guys are new here, consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming. And... Uh, if you enjoyed this bed rail, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.